Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about egg dropping today, which is a very common problem in interview questions. But the reason I picked this up is because it teaches us about dynamic programming and how to use it in certain scenarios. All right, you have this uh, particular tower of n floors and you have e eggs with you. So when you throw an egg, an egg might break or it might not break. What you need to do is find the threshold floor in this tower. So uh, you need to find that particular floor from which if you throw an egg, it breaks. But any floor lower than it, you go to that and you throw an egg, it will not break. Okay, that's, that's what the threshold floor is. Another thing which is interesting is that you need to use the minimum number of tries. So, the number of times that you actually throw an egg has to be minimized. Not the number of eggs you are breaking. You can break all E eggs as long as you can answer uh, the question of which is the threshold floor. Alright, so it's a pretty interesting problem. It's a little different from how we usually think of saving eggs or something. So one of the uh, most brute force approaches is to actually start off at the bottom floor, throw an egg and check if it breaks. If it doesn't, then you go up. And so you work your way up all the way up to in the worst case all n floors and check which is the minimum floor. So this might take you n tries and this is of course terrible. You can start from the opposite side but even there the worst case is n tries. So uh, this brute force approach is not so good. A common thing that people do uh, when given this problem is to try to break this tower into fixed size blocks. Right, so uh, each block will be of size B. So B floors are in each block. And what they try to do is they try to skip blocks. So let's say that they have a block here. That's B blocks in between. So this is the first block that you have. And your second block. And your third block and so on and so forth till you are at the top of the tower. What they try to do is go to the uh, top of the first block, drop an egg from here. If the egg breaks, then they know that the, the threshold floor is between 0 and B. If the egg doesn't break, then they know that the threshold floor is uh, between B and N. Alright, so this is how they approach it. And let's say the egg doesn't break, then they go up and up and up all the way up to n any time that the egg breaks they are left with only b blocks to compute and in these b blocks there is a brute force approach so let's say uh, the egg over here did not break the egg at 2b broke so here it broke and now you have these many blocks to look into with e minus 1 eggs so what will happen is uh, you have Till now you have used one egg by the way, because the moment it broke, you have uh, B blocks to look at. So now they start at block number B and slowly work their way up to 2B. So again you use only two eggs, which you don't care about how many other eggs to use. But the important thing is, you have used two eggs and the number of computations that you are doing is N by B, which is the worst case, you go all the way up to the tower. And at the very last floor, your egg breaks. So, you have to do B computations. Alright, so this is the equation that we are looking at. Let's try to understand what is the minimum block size that we can use. We could use some differentiation. So, this is n is a constant. B is the variable. So, we are differentiating. What we get is 1 minus n squared by I'm sorry, 1 minus n by b square is equal to 0, which in turn gives us n upon b square equal to 1, which gives us uh, b equal to root n. And just to be sure, let's differentiate this again to find out if it is a maxima or not, or a maxima or a minima. We are looking for a minima, by the way. So if you if you uh, differentiate this again, you get 2n upon b cube. So that is greater than 0, which means that this is a minima, which is what we want. So 
B should be equal to root n. Whatever tower you are given of n floors, you break it into blocks of size root n, and then do some brute force stuff like throw it from the each floor end and then brute force out the next solution. So this is very interesting because it's the heart of square root decomposition. Uh, given an array of size n, what is the most optimal way to break it into blocks? Square root of n. All right, and what we uh, can do now is look at this term b plus n by b and substitute b as root n so what we get is root n plus n by root n which is root n so that is 2 root n is the maximum number of tries that you need so 2 root n is of course much better than n so strong improvement but still not the best so the function to calculate the minimum number of tries for any n number of flows and e number of eggs is very logical. You have only two possibilities whenever you throw an egg. So let's say you take an egg and throw it from floor number x. All right. If the egg breaks, then it is somewhere below you. So anything less than x, x minus 1 are the flows remaining. And e minus 1 are the eggs you have now. You had e eggs initially, you lost one egg, so it's e minus 1 now. And that answer has to be taken into account. The other possibility is that you throw the egg and it doesn't break. So everything above you is now in doubt. So you have n, the topmost floor, minus x, number of floors remaining with you. That's this. And you didn't break your egg, so that is e x still with you. Alright, these are two possibilities for any floor x. So these two possibilities, you need to take the worst case scenario and that's why you're going to maximize among these two. You will take the worst case among these two scenarios. Also you need to consider that when you are throwing from floor number x, you are actually using one try. So after you have maximized these two, you also need to consider that and add one over here. One extra try whenever you are throwing from floor number x. Alright, that is one scenario for x. You need to try for all possible x, of course. So for all possible x, what is our goal? To minimize the number of tries. So we are minimizing the worst case scenario for all possible floors less than n. Basically starting from 1 to n minus 1. Alright, and this function will give you the answer for any n and e with two things to keep in mind. I mean, when does this function ever end? n minus x will go to a certain point and we need to give a base condition for that. So that is going to be defined by f of a single floor, how many tries do you need? One try. It doesn't matter how many eggs you have. If you have a single floor remaining, f of 1 comma e is 1. Similarly, if you have just one egg remaining, you need to try all possible floors in the worst case because you'll have to start from the bottom and maybe you'll have to go all the way to the top. You can't start from the top because if you throw an egg and it breaks you, you're never sure which is the threshold floor. So you need to start from the bottom, worst case go all the way to the top and that's how you have n tries in the worst case of this space condition. Otherwise, for this space condition you have just one try. Any number of x. So this problem has taken a long time to solve and that's why you see different attire often in this video. But uh, getting to the dynamic programming part of this, we have three conditions we need to satisfy. So this is our recursive solution. We can convert this to a dynamic programming approach with these three conditions. If they, if they satisfy, then we can uh, convert it. So firstly, there should be no loops. By that I mean, if f of x comma y depends on f of x plus one comma y plus one, which somehow it depends on f of x comma y, then we are finished because uh, there isn't a direct way to approach the solution. You can't go on increasing uh, x and y, neither can you go on decreasing x and y. So there shouldn't be any cyclic dependency and basically the term over here that you should know is a DAG. A directed acyclic graph is what, you're, what you want when you're actually computing these terms. All right. The second thing is optimal substructure. So for what that really means is that if you break the problem into sub-problems, that does not 
change the solution of the sub problem so uh, there is no history that you need to maintain that this is how i broke the sub problem and and basically the sub problem is still optimal you can use that solution to build a larger solution that's what optimal substructure means what about recursive well so basically you can break the problem into sub problems and solve it so that will be your recursive solution so recursive is obviously we have that optimal substructure is also true for x floors and e eggs if you break it down to y floors and q eggs it will still work the solution is still valid because it's the exact same scenario all right so optimal substructure is also there you take these two solutions and make the bigger one that's the reason why and there's no loops once you reduce the number of flows you're constantly reducing the number of flows or you're reducing the number of eggs or both so we are reducing something we are never increasing anything so this is a directed acyclic graph guarantee now what so we can actually apply dp on this how well one of the simplest ways and best ways to do dynamic programming is the bottom up approach so we take this solution and store for every n and e the minimum from x ranging from 0 to n minus 1 maximum of f which is an array storing n minus x comma e comma f again having x minus 1 and e minus 1 so this is the row and column number uh, and you'll be storing these and you'll be adding one which is one try and this is your solution for any given uh, n and e now the way we'll be actually populating this array is by starting from columns 1 comma 1 all right and uh, so i and j will be running in a for loop i equal to 1 to n and j equal to 1 to e f of i comma j is found out using this formula and this solution is order of n computations over here into e computations over here i'm not getting into detail with this because the code is uh, in the description below and it's far more simple to you know just read that and understand rather than explain this so n into e into what are the number com uh, number of computations you need for every ij you need to find out the max for every possible x where x goes from 0 to n minus 1 so n values that x can take and finding the max is an order one operation among two values so that will be and the minimum of all of them is again order n which is already shown so these are the number of computations you need to perform which in turn is order n square e and so this solution is exponential and using dynamic programming we have brought it down to just n square into e so let's solve an example we have eight floors and four eggs with us the minimum number of tries that we need for this scenario is four so how do i know this uh, well i ran the program and it took about 15 seconds to do this it had taken me half an hour to get somewhere over here and then the program and copying the values was very fast so uh, that's what you need to do just use this particular formula that we have found out where you take the minimum of the worst case for all possible eggs such that either the egg doesn't break in which n minus x is the number of floors you have remaining and uh, otherwise the floor you know the egg breaks at this floor so x minus 1 comma e minus 1 is what you're looking for and you tried one dropping an egg from this particular floor so that there's a plus one over there the base cases are if you have one floor remaining then it doesn't matter uh, how many eggs you have you have to give one try at least and similarly if you have n floors remaining but you just have one egg remaining 
in the worst case you have to start from the bottom and go all the way up so that will be end rise from every floor you need to th throw the egg from the bottom so th that's what this table represents uh, on the first row we have every value equal to 1 because you just have one floor remaining so everything is 1 similarly the first column everything is equal to n which is the row number you can see that over here and the remaining uh, values are computed using this formula so let's try for a simple one we'll try it for f of this one 2 comma 2 so x starts with 1 and goes up to n minus 1 so n minus 1 here n is equal to 2 so x starts with 1 and goes up to 1 so there's just one possible value of x that's nice we don't need to minimize the quantity ahead so worst case when x is equal to 1 is f of n which is 2 minus 1 which is 2 minus 1 so that is 1 you don't break an egg e e equal to 2 or f of x which is 1 now and e you break the egg the second case so this maximum of this plus 1 is what you will require f of 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 is 1 and f of 1 comma 1 is 1 again so the maximum among these two is 1 so and there's a plus 1 over here so plus 1 gives you 2 so f of 2 comma 2 is equal to 2 and that's what we have over here similarly if you have the time and if you want to verify then you can go all the way over here but uh, don't uh, it's better that you use some program to uh, find this out and in fact a program using dynamic programming for this is very easy you can see the code in the description below so that's it about towels and eggs if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them below i'll be sharing all relevant links in the description and uh, until next time see you